Yeah, the product. Yeah. <laughs> in you, Singapore, yeah, correct, correct, Chef Sam Chua collects a special order for the evening service. Inside this box is a product she has been serving her customers for the past few months. Well, for draw, grown entirely in a laboratory. The meat was made by artificially multiplying quail cells and mixing them with plant-based fibres. You can also see everything is very consistent in terms of colour, in terms of shape, even the flavour. Uh, so in terms of safety, that's number one. I think the most important part for running a restaurant is when you get a, something like a, like a bird flu or things like that, then you cannot get the product. Made in Australia, this synthetic meat is now served in 20 restaurants across Singapore. It will actually take a slightly a bit longer just to get the colour on it, yet still maintains that melty feeling of what we enjoy in the foie gras, right? Combined with caviar and truffles, it's one of restaurant's signature dishes, costing 125 euros. As a meat lover, you know, I do want to cut down on on actual meat. So to have this option and to still have, you know, the, the taste, it's amazing. It's amazing. In 2020, Singapore became the first country to approve lab-grown meat for consumption. Today, cultivated chicken is sold in stores at 40 euros per kilo. In this lab, Mihir Parshad has developed several fish species, including those threatened by overfishing. Its products are sold to food industry giants and used in their research programs to develop new product lines. So we're working on species like Japanese eel, uh, which is served here as an unagi don, a very traditional Japanese style. We are also now working on bluefin tuna, where you see this tuna sashimi here. Our view was that these species are very important to prioritize because otherwise human demand will drive them to extinction. So basically, based on what we feed the cells and the conditions under which we grow them, we can bias them to make accumulate more fat, more protein. The production of cultured meat begins with extracting muscle stem cells from the animal. In this kind of incubator, what we do is that we put the cells into a flask where the cells will then attach to the bottom. So that will allow the cells to survive and proliferate or grow. The cells are then transferred to a bioreactor, a high-tech tank, where they continue growing in a nutrient-rich solution. And so this, in this small tube, it has a 17 gram of her cells, roughly. It looks uh, very similar to a, a very finely minced meat because technically what we have are single cells from the animal. They are then mixed with vegetable proteins to obtain a meat-like texture. With limited farmland, Singapore imports 90% of its food, a dependency disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. To change this, the country aims to produce 30% of its food locally by 2030. At the University of Technology, researchers use fermentation and fungi to create new alternatives. But before the food reaches consumers, it must be proven safe. That's the job of Professor Chen, who heads the Future Ready Food Safety Hub in partnership with the government. There are a few areas of assessment one is uh, chemical and biological potential contamination and uh, also there's some reaction to our gastric enzymes. Uh, all these will present a different profile of the potential toxicity. The good thing about the urban solution is that we can minimize the disadvantages by controlling or reducing or even removing the potential uh, risk factor. Amid climate change and intensive farming, lab-grown meat could be a healthy, sustainable solution. But only if it can be streamlined and made more affordable. A trajectory similar to plant-based substitutes, which are now well-established in the global market. Well, we try new flavours today, right? Uh... The soy-based chicken fillet is one of the company's best-selling products. So I think there is a, a big misconception about processed food. This is not more processed than any pasta or any breakfast cereals or food else you would, you would buy. This is one of 400 food innovation companies in Singapore, a highly competitive space that is driving the creation of hyper-realistic meat products. Mm. Wow, it has the bite of real chicken. It tastes like real chicken. But convincing consumers to switch remains a challenge. At the government level, 
uh, the emergency is being felt, the pressure is being felt, and food security is a, is a hot topic. But at the consumer level, unfortunately, it's not yet an emergency. People are not feeling the pressure. But this industry has only been around for 10, 12 years at the most, and we're competing up against a traditional meat industry that has been around for hundreds of years. So, you know, change will happen slowly, but it's important that it does happen. By 2050, the United Nations predicts 70% of the global population will live in urban areas, a challenge forcing the food industry to reinvent itself. Singapore is set to take this revolution to the global stage.